particular, we have uh, neglected uh, the, the views or the ideas uh, of those who really know. But I think the, the, the recurring question has always been especially more pronounced today. Who is it that, that is, is the one who really knows? Uh, how do we define a scholar or an academic in today's context? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Again, this kind of thing has been asked even before, I mean, at least for the past two decades. People have asked me this when I've said that you have to leave it to the scholar. They ask, oh, who is the scholar? Can you tell us who it is or who is the academic? I mean, for me, of course, it's, it's, uh, it's not a problem, but apparently it's a problem now. That, uh, you know, they, they want to know who is a scholar. If you're thinking the scholar, the scholar, the scholar, who is a scholar? Okay, well, let me ask you, what is the difference between the scholar and the academic? It's like this. The scholar, he is one who knows and knows he knows. Then they'll say, well, that's a very, a very, a very uh, convoluted way of putting things. And then what about the academic? Well, the academic also knows. Yeah, that's true. The difference is this. An academic is somebody who knows a lot of things. They can, they can recite books for you. They can, they can put all kinds of references down. But when it comes to connecting a certain problem or developing an epistemology and then developing an ontology and developing a cosmology, they can't do that. They don't have that. Now, the scholar, on the other hand, he also knows a lot of things, but in his case, the scholar is one who develops an epistemology, who has a system, who has an ontology, who has a cosmology. He knows all of it. Then, therefore, whenever there is a problem that arises, he can look at the problem. He can look at uh, a precedent maybe in the past where he has read something similar. Or he can use his own discretion to develop a, a certain kind of a solution. And therefore, if you ask this scholar, when we say it in the, in the Malay language, we say ulama. But we are not talking the ulama of today or ustad, ustad. We don't mean these people. We don't mean the ulama of today that call themselves ulama. These are the ones who are just uh, ennobling themselves, who have just put the mantle on themselves or the politicians have put the mantle on them. What we mean by the ulama is somebody who, first of all, this word ulama, it comes from the root word ayn lam mim, yes? Yes. The Arabic root word ayn lam mim, yes. ilam. And therefore, this ilam is relative to whom? Obviously, this ilam is relative to Allah and to man. But in this existence, our existence here, this ilam is relative to man alone. It is not relative to, to the animals or the beasts. Mm. It is relative to man. And this ilam relative to man is concerning what? And the answer to that is it concerns the alam. This world and the next world, this knowledge that we have, it concerns alam and the next world. But this alam also is derived from the same root word, ayn lam mim. But then when you look at that, when you look at this alam, the world of creation, there has to be, according to the worldview of Islam, there has to be a creator. And the creator is al-alim, one, one of his sifat is al-alim, one of his, uh, one of his uh, attributes. And all of them derive from the same root word. And the ulama is somebody who can connect this alam, I mean this ilam, with the alam, with al-alim. That is the epistemology. That is the ontology. That is the cosmology as defined by the world of Islam. And that is the scholar, the one who can connect these things in that system, mm. putting things all in the right place. Right. That is the scholar. The academic can't do that. The academic is one who is very well read. He knows a lot of works. He knows a lot of books. But if you ask him how to solve the problem of today, he can probably go back in history and quote some uh, book in history or quote some problem in history and say that this is what they did then. But whether they can do it in, in today's world is another matter. Right. Now, that is the academic. Okay. Book sense, a lot of this. Now, the, the, the interesting thing also with a scholar, the one who knows this in a systemic way, in other words, you have the epistemology, ontology, cosmology, is also this discretionary power, this discretionary intelligence, what they call bayan, ilm bayan They have to have this discretion, right. the subtle nuances. Now, this, the ulama, the real ulama, the real scholar, he has this discretion. 
he knows how to use the discretion even if there isn't a precedent. Right. Now, that's the difference. So if you ask today, now who is the scholar? You look for the one like that. The one who has an entire system. The one who has everything already developed from the beginning. In other words, from the time of the, from, from the, from not the, from the time, but from, from the point of view of knowledge itself. How does he develop this knowledge into a system, into an ontology? How does he develop that into a, con into a cosmology, into a, into an entire system, which then is in accordance with the worldview of Islam itself, as defined to us by the revelation and the fundamental elements? That is a scholar. And there are very few of those around. Very few. But it's not to say we don't have them. Of course we do. But they are very, very few and far between. And even if we didn't have one in existence today, a living, breathing one today, okay. we have all their works that they have left behind to us in their writings in the past. Okay. Now, that's why I, was, I keep on harping on this same important, in my, in, in my belief, important uh, point, that rather than waste our money, waste our resources, waste our natural resources, on purchasing things which have really no benefit for humanity as a whole, we should start thinking seriously about building a national library of scholars, a national scholars library. Go and search for these works that they have left for us. Keep them. Make use of them. Teach them in schools. I mean, these people, like, like, like I was saying just now, this Nuruddin Raniri is no longer alive. Yes. And yet his scholarly works are being uh, are being preserved by the scholar yes. but there is no one who's interested in learning from these things yes. no no students who are interested in finding out about what the scholastic elements of his philosophy were this is this hikmah malayu thing now don't think that this hikmah malayu is just limited also to only the malay people no it's our tradition our tradition comes from islam itself and therefore all of the hikmah, hikmah, which are beneficial to that, to that uh, tradition, should be preserved. Mm.